Hey everyone, I almost didn't even do a vlog today. Uh, it's been crazy. I've had like, I, I really have been like abusing caffeine at this point. I had, I think I had like a monster already this morning and then I had one like at four o'clock this afternoon, just was completely drained. I've been, I, I even have this thing open here. Um, I've been working on a lot of stuff with Google Cloud that has been pretty, uh, pretty intense doing stuff with Google Cloud. Um, I use this this application that they have. Um, they've got this thing called My Bookshelf or something like that. So um, in here, if I go back, CD back, CD back, and then I CD into G Cloud, LS, oh, forgotten that, PowerShell, PowerShell. And then CD uh, LS and CD into getting started. So Google's got these really awesome tutorials on how to get started with Google Cloud, which is is good when you start to use it. I'm just really frustrated because a little while ago, you guys saw me make a video about this IoT board that I got, and it has um, Google Cloud built into it. I guess like that's microchips big sell is that like it's integrated with Google Cloud. It, automatically push the stuff up to Firebase. They give you a lot of starter code to get going with it. But the problem was I was trying to use, I was trying to pull information from that real-time database in um, Firebase. And the issue was Webpack was failing when I was trying to build the script from uh, the starter code for the AVR IoT board. So I couldn't get it going and um, I'm really just trying to figure out how to get that put together, and it's I'm really lucky because the Clubhouse Code Bootcamp, we're going over Google, Google Cloud, which is is really cool. Like I'm familiar with Cloud Nine, and that's a Amazon, that's an AWS thing. So, getting a little bit of experience with Google Cloud is awesome because now I can start to really hone in on my PHP skills and make some cool PHP apps. They also have all this cool starter code that you can get straight from their GitHub. Um, it's just cheap. It's Google Cloud getting started with PHP. We've got this awesome set of starter code. Now I just I, I cloned down their repository. So this is uh, uh, just pulled from their repository. So if I CD into uh, I'm in that structured data thing. It comes with all these files, which uh, is a Silex framework is what they're using. And Silex is a, is a PHP framework that's abandoned right now. So I kind of I was trying to build my own framework with this, and I've switched to using uh, Symphony, and I'm making an app in Symphony as part of my project for the Code Bootcamp. But I was able to successfully create the app for this um, this uh, this solution that they have in Google Cloud. It's really cool, actually. So this is what the app looks like. You can go into you can add a book and there's an ad route and when you add this thing it sends a post uh, a post request and it's a really nice controller you can go back to your bookshelf we can um, take a look at this neuromancer one we can edit this book uh, we can save our changes it'll update it so if you look at that edit book here's our edit route right here and we can go back and we can delete the book. The delete route obviously deletes. So in a RESTful, in a RESTful API, we have our update, save, delete, and put, and show routes. It's basically how you can break it down. So this solution has all those routes in there for you. And it just takes a little bit of time to go through the tutorial, uh, my bookshelf tutorial, my bookshelf, bookshelf tutorial, bookshelf overview, Google Cloud Platform. Check out this awesome tutorial that they have set up here. It's pretty solid. So in your logged in, you can see, oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't want to, yeah. So you can see everything in there. I can see everything in my uh, my Google Cloud thing. I'm not going to show you all the stuff that I have in here, but um, it's pretty cool. It's nice. Um, I'm probably going to take down this project just because it's it's not 
it's not my project. It was just to kind of get me started. I'm trying to make this new one using Symphony. But it was fun to get going with this. It took a lot of time, and um, I'm glad I put in the time now because the time's paid off. Like, I know how to work with a YAML file. I didn't know what those were at first. I always kind of had to have another developer kind of work with me to get those things set up on the server. Now I know how to do that on my own. So that's really exciting. You know, I can make my own PHP framework. I can set up my own apps. I can make my own apps. I love having that ability to do that in a language. Like, I feel like I can make a app with C Sharp and Unity. I feel like I can make an app with Node.js and, um, you know, Node.js, MongoDB Express. Like, I know the things that need to go together, the libraries that you need to make the app. So it's really exciting to have that capability now in PHP. I'm really pumped up for that. But um, I've been really busy all day. Setting up servers takes a really, really, really long time. It takes a long time. There's a lot of like setting up machines, waiting, getting, pulling, installing. I'm using Composer for everything. Um, it, it, it's, it's a lot. But uh, this tutorial was nice. Uh, if I look in the controllers file, it's a really nice way to get used to um, using a REST API. We have a Git route, which shows us the, this is the index. So even Google has, Google even has these labeled for you. So there's the index route. Here's our add route. Here's our, uh, and then add also has to have a post, right? Because you have to add new content. Here's our show route, uh, end show. Here's our edit route, goes all the way down, right? We got a post in our edit because we're gonna be adding edits. And then we have our delete route. So that gives you the whole entire breakdown of how to make a rest, uh, RESTful API, RESTful routing, I guess. Those are the routes that you need for an app. With that, that's pretty much Reddit, Facebook, any of those things that get started, you're not gonna be able to make a Facebook, you're not gonna be able to make a Reddit with just those things because it takes like a uh, database engineer to be able to engineer the way that all the data is stored and you need another person who can work on connectivity issues with networking. So there's a lot, the reason that those companies are so big is because yeah, you can make like a clone of YouTube or a clone of Facebook or a clone of that stuff, but it's not gonna be as good and no one's really gonna use it. There's tons of those out there on the internet, but it's good experience as a programmer to know how those things work. So you, when you do work with a larger team, uh, you know, get more of that experience. But yep, that's pretty much what I've been doing in the code bootcamp. And uh, other than that, I've been working on algorithms and data structures. I've really, <laughs> I'm really getting into recursion and recursive algorithms. If I guess since I've got this little, I got the surface pen now, so I can kind of break down um, one of the algorithms that I was looking at today. Uh, let me go ahead and this is cool. This is like an ink workspace. So this is um, a tail recursion, but I'll, I'll show you how to do it with like a sum. So let's say we want to make a function that sums the numbers for a given integer. So we do it in C++, we got to declare public int f uh yeah public and f of uh and n c plus plus is a very type heavy language so you always have to declare your data types first and when you're making a recursive function the only thing you need to do is define the base case we'll explain why i'll explain why it needs to be the base ca base case so the the base case is if n Whoa. If n equals one, uh, return one. That's it. And uh, we're gonna have return n plus f n. So what this is going to do is all this stuff gets pushed onto the stack. So the first call is going to be, let's say we do, um, let's say we call fn, let's say we do four. So the first call is going to be four plus f of, whoop, and minus one. This is the important thing in recursion. You always want to decrease because we're decreasing n and then eventually we're going to hit this, we're going to hit this base case right here. Got that eraser tool. Man, the Surface Pro book is so awesome. 
So this is the first call, right? And then the next call is going to be, uh, we're going to have 3 plus f of 2. And then the next call is going to be 2, f of 1. And then if it's 1, it returns 1. So now this becomes 1. 2 plus 1 gives us 3. 3 plus 3 gives us 6. 6 plus 4 gives us 10. So I don't know what I was trying to sum of the first the sum of the first four integers. So six so that's gonna be one plus two plus three plus four. And that gives us ten. Yep. So it's um, I'm saying the sum of the integers to n uh, in shorthand notation that would be uh, I I equals one to yeah one to four yeah one two three four yep yeah so that's what this function does it just gives us the sum of the first four integers and it does it recursively just kind of a cool algorithm and uh, I'm getting into writing out algorithms working on data structures and thinking more abstractly about algorithms and really trying to understand a computer at a much finer level um, but yep that's that's pretty much it just working on stuff and I'm really looking forward to this weekend tomorrow is national sleep day if you didn't know so I will not be getting up at 3 a.m. I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna be chilling out and probably gonna sleep in sleeping in for me is like actually sleeping until 5 which is what happens when you train your body to get up at 3 a.m. all the time you just naturally get up at 3 a.m. I do drink copious amounts of coffee but that's besides the point um, I just I think I naturally during the week my body's like okay we need to get up really early that's what that's what I'm used to doing and it, it all comes from a weird resolution I made like a year and a half ago about just I'm gonna get up early and I'm gonna do some stuff um, so yeah that was the whole it was like fat November 26 a random day and I was like I'm gonna start getting up at 5 a.m. then that turned into 4 a.m. then that turned into 3 a.m. because I get I get stuff done and I know myself really well. I know when I come home, I'm far less productive. And I've got so many things just bouncing around in my mind that keep me from having what I refer to as laser focus on tasks. When I wake up, I can't help but have laser focus. There's really no, like you, you just woke up. What could you be upset about? What could have happened to you that's going to change your perspective on the day? What? You're in control most of the time. I mean, sometimes, you know, you wake up and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that thing I'm going to take care of, whatever. Most of the time, you wake up with a pretty fresh mind, and that's, you. it's different for everyone. But for me, that's my go time when I don't have distractions. Because I'm like the type of person who's like, hmm, I got to pay that thing, or oh, I got to pick up that thing from the grocery store. And for some reason, I just can't drop it. So I, I have more focus in the morning. That's, that's the way I am. But it's different for everyone. So... Yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be sleeping in, and this weekend I'm really looking forward to spending some quality time with friends and family and uh, just taking it easy. But that's it for today's vlog. Hope you enjoyed.